And good afternoon. It's an unusual day here in the neighborhood. Uh, we have a lot of information to cover, and I hope that it will help uh, provide you information that, that uh, will help you make decisions. Um, as you know, over the um, years, I've, I've said to you, uh, uh, I'm not a lawyer. Um, please don't refer to me as a lawyer. And now I have a confession to make. I'm not a doctor either. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the honor of being called your deal doctor, but I'm not a medical doctor, not a research doctor. And so some of the information coming out about the coronavirus is uh, uncertain. We have a lot of uncertainty. Everybody has a lot of questions, and I will tell you right now, I don't have all the answers for them. I will assure you, however, that uh, Paul, Eric, Greg, Kim, and myself, we are all working very, very hard to get you the answers and to give you some guidance. Um, one of my, before I go into that, one of my uh, favorite writers, um, leaders of countries, was Winston Churchill. And one of his most famous quotes was, never, never, never give up. It's pretty simple. Um, he also said, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, and an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Think about that. Um, he also had a quote when the Germans were about ready to unleash, unleash the Blitzkrieg on, on uh, uh, Great Britain, that he hoped that looking back, historians would say of the British that this was their finest hour. This could be America's finest hour if we choose to make it that. It could be America's finest hour. So I hope you'll take these things that we have to say today to heart, uh, to remain calm, to carry on. We're going to get through this. We're going to do it together. So with that, let's talk about the COVID-19 Purchase Agreement Condition Extension. Now, if any of you didn't see this last week, this was distributed uh, through the uh, Grand Rapids Association of Realtors. We had it posted last week as, as soon as we got it onto Dot Loop, and it's been there since, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. And it is an extension to the contracts that you have in place. This can be signed um, electronically. There's nothing preventing you from getting this signed between your buyers and sellers. However, bear in mind that it also requires both signatures to be effective. You can't have a buyer sign it or a seller sign it and have it be uh, an enforceable document without both parties signing it. Um, what it says is that in order to extend all contract deadlines not yet passed as permitted hereunder, the purchaser or seller shall provide the other party with written notice, and that notice shall describe the specific COVID-19 condition. Well, we got a big one today, didn't we? And that is, we're going on a state-wide uh, shutdown, stay-at-home order. That's kind of a, that's kind of a big condition that um, would uh, trigger this if either party or both put the other on notice of the COVID-19 condition. Um, in the event the COVID-19 condition remains in effect beyond 30 calendar days, then the purchase agreement shall automatically terminate and the buyers go their separate ways, the purchaser gets uh, his or her money back. Now, I think one of the important things to remember about this document, in addition to the fact that um, it's not effective unless both parties sign it, is that they're, like any document, any contract, there are pros and cons. Um, you may run into a seller who says, I don't want to. I don't want to sign that. 
I don't want to lock my property into a sale that um, is going to get extended 30 days, at least 30 days. I'd rather have it back on the market and see if I can get a different offer. Maybe there's some uh, concern about that offer. Uh, maybe there's a backup offer sitting, waiting in the wings. And that backup offer may be for $20,000 more in cash. So they may not want to sign this. The question is, and we don't have an answer to this. I've, put a, uh, I've sent an email to Gail Anderson to get an answer for you. And we will provide those as quickly as we can. The question is, can a seller bail out of a contract now that we have <clears throat> a stay-at-home order in place? I don't know the answer to that, but we're going to find out for you. By the same token, a buyer may not want to be locked into a contract uh, with this addendum. They may say, you know, I've got to make a choice within the next two weeks whether I am going to renew my apartment lease or I'm going to be closing on a house. Again, they may say, I can't sign that addendum. That's not in my best interest to do that. Five stars job is not to take a position on this document. We're, we're not going to say whether it's right or wrong to have your buyers or sellers sign it. What we are going to say is that it's important that you understand the document and that you can explain the possibilities, the, 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 the potential outcomes to your clients and then let them decide whether or not they want to sign it. So that's that one. I hope that helps a little bit with that one. Um, also have a copy here. And believe me, we've been running pretty fast since 11 o'clock this morning. Well, actually, since earlier than that, uh, because we had rumors that um, Governor Whitmer was going to put this stay-at-home order in place. So we've been scrambling really fast. And I know you have a lot of questions, and thankfully, you're putting them on Facebook Connect. Um, that's probably the best place. We would appreciate it if you could help us by putting them on Facebook Connect so we have one clearinghouse for your questions. I know that Kim and I and Eric, uh, Paul, Greg, we're all getting questions directed to us individually. Uh, and to the extent you can, let's keep it as a collective, collaborative effort so we can address all of the questions that you have. Um, this, is, this is a multi-page uh, recap of her uh, executive order that went goes into effect at midnight tonight, actually 12.01 tomorrow to be specific. But um, it basically says stay home. Now, there is a question, and again, I've asked this question of Gail Anderson. It's, it's in her inbox. And I will get you an answer as quickly as we can. Uh, does the word, sometimes lawmakers um, create law that is not clear. <laughs> I know that comes as a shock. No, it doesn't. Um, can title work and the closing of a transaction, the consummation of a mortgage, banks are left open, they are considered essential services. As part of a bank, a mortgage is being processed. I don't know if they're limiting staff there. I, I have no idea. But if a mortgage is ready to close, does that eliminate that company and the title company and the buyers and sellers uh, from being a financial service at that point. I don't have an answer on that, but we're going to get one for you. Um, how does this affect the contracts that you have in place? I know that one of the questions that we have is 
uh, about possession. Somebody is going to uh, or has closed and possession is going to be transferred um, at some time during the next 13 uh, day period um, or three week period uh, up to April 13th. And the question is, what happens with possession if that possession is supposed to take place on, let's say, March 30th, for example? Does this order preempt that uh, occupation transfer? Um, we don't know. Um, we're going to get the answers for you. But as of this moment, I can't tell you from a legal standpoint whether or not it does. It would seem to me that it might change the nature of that contract because essentially the governor has said you have to stay home. You can't be out moving stuff around like moving vans um, under this order. But I don't have a definitive answer for you on that. Again, bear in mind, none of us have been through this. Uh, this is uncharted waters for all of us. We're going to have to work through it together as best we can. Um, and that's the best I can tell you. We do have a response from the... Um, Michigan Association of Realtors, or Michigan Realtors, um, which says that real estate services like the showing of homes, listing of homes, appraisal, appraisals, and title services are all considered non-critical, and travel to do so is prohibited until April 13. Willful violation of the governor's order is a misdemeanor. It is important to note that this order prevents travel. We certainly, uh, we have certainly noticed examples of innovation within our membership to both continue serving clients and foster health and awareness. Real estate activity that can be conducted remotely is not prohibited. Using that loop to get documents signed, to keep a transaction moving forward, is not prohibited, not at all. Um, we are going to be looking at other options as far as how to get uh, closings. If, again, whether or not this stay-at-home order is uh, uh, stops title companies and mortgage companies from processing and closing loans. We don't have an answer on that. Um, obviously, this order just came out uh, two hours ago. And we are still in the process of reviewing it and uh, what its implications are. Um, let's see. We're going to check for some comments here. Give me just a moment. Barbara Holt, if my seller chooses not to sign the addendum, the one we showed her here earlier, this one, um, will the buyer have a legitimate reason to back out? Inspections and requested repairs completed. In my interpretation, the answer would be yes, the buyer has a legitimate reason uh, to back out if the seller is not willing to extend that contract 30 days under the COVID-19 um, uh, directive by the governor. That said, um, the buyer would have to provide in writing per this addendum the reason that they are backing out of the deal, that they, that, that, uh, well, actually they wouldn't because they wouldn't have signed the addendum. So skip that. Uh, but if they both sign the addendum and 
then you could cite this uh, uh, this event, uh, the, the governor's um, uh, uh, stay at home order. You could cite that as a reason to trigger the 30 days provided in this addendum. Um, if the seller doesn't sign it, well, the, then in my view, the contract ends when the end date of the contract passes and you haven't closed. Now, <laughs> there's always a gray area, and the gray area is this. As this unfolds and we begin to see the impact of the stay-at-home order and the stoppage of contracts being written or closings not occurring, will judges look at this and say, wait a minute, um, we're not going to kill this deal because somebody couldn't perform due to the to the stay at home governor's stay at home order. Um, does it mean that judges are going to look at this and say, wait, no, um, you the seller can't bail out uh, and the buyer can't bail out simply because there is an event that is not under their control to move the, the sale forward uh, or to get it closed. So again, this is a legal question. Um, we don't have the answers on it yet, but we're going to get them for you as quickly as we can. Uh, let's see what else we have today. What fun. Um, hmm. Uh, let's see, Thomas Serio, can you upload the addendum to Facebook Connect? Um, yes, we can do that. Uh, well, actually, I thought it was already uploaded at one point. Um, Paul might take care of that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Paul, too. Oh, okay. We'll make sure that that gets on there, Thomas. But, um, yes, we can do that. Um, what what are the questions we have? We have uh, from Larry Manetti. Did you see that one in the Google Doc? <laughs> Sorry, we're scrolling through a number of... Uh, number of different locations where peace, people are posting uh, emails and um, um, obviously the Five Star Connect page. Larry Minetti, how about people whose jobs are on hold indefinitely definitely, and lenders are now checking employment one day prior to closing? Um, yeah, I don't, have, I don't have an answer for that. I think we're going to reach out to our lenders uh, and find out uh, if they are going to be taking this into consideration in the lending process, that this is an anomaly, that a job was not lost, uh, that it was uh, put on hold, that there was a temporary layoff. Again, we don't know the answer. Are the, uh, are the underwriters for mortgage companies going to take this COVID-19 and the governor's directive into consideration in the process of their, uh, in their mortgage process. I don't know the answer to that. Um, again, we've never been here before. So we're going to reach out to our lenders and find out as much information as we can. And when we get it, we will be providing it. Um, what about our monthly bills to Five Star? Well, we can't sell anything. Um, I'm going to defer that to Paul and Greg. Um, it's not a question that I can answer. That's a policy question. And um, I'm, I'm going to hand it off to Paul and Greg. 
So, um, just command. So, to sum it up, no showings, appointments, etc., unless it's a closing. Um, we're not even sure that a closing can occur at this point. Uh, is it a essential financial service? We've not gotten a directive from our attorneys regarding that, and until we do, I can't say yes, that you can go ahead and have a closing. I can't say no, either. Again, this is all new territory. Um, showings can, however, be virtual tours, um, by all means. If your seller wants to go through and do a virtual tour of a video of their house, and provide it to you or you have done a virtual tour as part of the listing package or your listing promotional materials uh, by all means um, can listing appointments be done virtually as well absolutely there is nothing that stops you from having a conversation with a seller and saying um, uh, grab your phone or your camera and take me through the house so that i can see uh, whether you have uh, uh, Harvest Gold appliances and red shag carpeting or it's updated. By all means, everything that we can do remotely um, is, is supported and encouraged. Um, Alyssa Hunter, do we know yet if inspectors and appraisers are considered critical? Um, we can only base our answer to you on what the Michigan Realtors has said, which is that they are not at this point considered critical services. I had this, I don't know where it went. Here it is. List, um, showing of homes and listing of homes, appraisal and title services are all considered non-critical and travel to do so is prohibited. Now, if they choose, if title companies choose to conduct uh, closings, um, I'm gonna leave it in their decision. I mean, that's their decision to make. The question is, do, do you as an agent need to attend or are you allowed to attend? Well, if it was my client, I'd sure be looking over the HUD statement or the broker's closing statement to make sure all of the documents are uh, correct. And then I would be available by phone or FaceTime or whatever uh, during that closing um, as a, uh, to uh, advise my client if there were any questions. Um, will those be done differently remotely or in office as normal? Um, again, uh, from all indications, uh, in-office closings, um, that's going to be up to the title company to decide. As the realtors involved, I would say that we're probably, uh, we need to avoid those based on the uh, governor's directive. Uh, but I would sure... This is a great time to learn Zoom. It's a great time to employ FaceTime. Uh, we're going to have to operate differently in the next few weeks. And it might teach us some new things. So, um, Ernesto, I have a couple of listing agreements signed. Should we hold off or list? That's a good question. I guess it depends on what your seller's motivation is. If they need to sell soon and understand that they may not get the exposure uh, for the next three weeks that they would normally get, um, then I'd probably list it by sending them the documents or sharing the documents with them on dot loop for their signatures. Get the listing understand that they may not be able to have in-person showings they may have to rely on virtual showings and electronic um, transactions over the next three weeks um, 
Julie Rietberg just posted a lengthy conference call with our board of directors. As you know, Greg is on the board of directors, so we'll be getting answers uh, regarding that uh, board of directors meeting as quickly as possible. Uh, we have Michigan Realtors position, but are requesting greater clarity from GRAR's legal counsel concerning pending transactions and other specific matters. Please stand by. We will be publishing a proposed best practices document for your information shortly. So everybody is working on this. The board of directors, every broker in town, um, should be, but Five Star is, and I know others are. Uh, your management team is working on it. Greg, Paul, uh, Paul's running point on this right now. Uh, Eric and I are fielding questions. Kim is fielding questions. We are going to get the answers to you as quickly as we can. Um, but again, I'm going to end this conversation, this, this live stream, by saying, hang tough. We're going to get through this. It may be different. It may be challenging. But we're going to get through it. And we're going to do everything we can to help you get through it as quickly as possible. I plan to see you next week. Till then.